and I decide so that the devotees don't have to go through. And here in comes the concept of balance again. I've actually wanted to show you this picture because it, it depicts nature's beauty. And as Murugan devotees, we need to reflect on nature. The Kavadi and chariots in the background, as you can see. Now this shows you a picture of the devotees, uh, sorry, of the onlookers uh, watching the procession. Many more onlookers. Now the devotees wait at the temple, the entrance to the temple for the Kavadi procession to arrive. Another picture of the um, group. Now this is a picture of Idaman and you'll find that Idaman when they reach the temple, Idaman circumambulates the temple, he does the production at first and he runs around the temple at such a, a, an enormous speed and you can see him coming around. Now this is a picture that just shows you the bells and of course the uh, nailed shoes. This is uh, the picture of the, the coil carbony carried by Edelman and you'll find that his two dandas are on the side. The temple chariot comes back and of course they park the te temple chariot. Another picture of uh, devotees performing um, Aradhani. Now this picture will show you Great Village Temple because on the left hand side is the hall. And I must mention in the early years the indentured laborers had a very difficult time to accumulate funds because there was nobody funding temples. In South Africa the temples are self-funded and it's one of the, 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 the most difficult areas. But despite the difficulties our forebears, our pity hours, they face the future with fortitude and our temples and they built the wall. And that wall was used as a Tamil school in the early days to propagate the Tamil language. And because of the education system in South Africa and the apartheid era, it was even used as an English school. The devotees normally just place their carbonies down here. Another devotee was just, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, without a semicircular structure. Another unusual carbony with the parents of the devotee. Carbony again. Devotees normally waiting in the queue. Uh, this is a perfect picture of balance. Another picture with Carbody, and I thought I must mention that this Carbody was decorated with artificial flowers. Another Carbody uh, bearer actually resting the Carbody on his head. Now this is a view of Carbody when the temple, uh, the uh, the Carbody bearers and the chariot drawers come back to the temple. Another picture of a female devotee, and I just wanted you to see that she carries the carbony with milk in the subcodons on either side. This is actually reflecting a youth in trance. Um, another area I, I particularly wanted to show is that we try to uh, retain our cultural identity in South Africa, and you do find that this youth has a veshti. A Kavani bearer with a picture of Palani Malay. And here I want to mention that the only temple in South Africa that is built on a hill is the Springfield Sri Siva Subramanya Temple. Um, it's a unique temple. It's, it has the more, one of the most beautiful, it, the Springfield Murugan is also another beautiful aspect of Lord Muruga. Kavani bearer with a Murugan statue. And of course, the creativity of Floyd in Bruga worship. The chariot drawers. Now, what happens is the Calvinists come first, and the chariot drawers they follow. And of course, when they follow, because the temple is not big enough, they normally the chariots are parked on the other end of the opposite the temple. This is uh, just to show you the number of symbols on the devotee's body. 
this is a female devotee carrying the Pau Kudam. Now you find most of the females usually and normally carry the Pau Kudam. But recent, uh, well, I wouldn't say a recent, but with the passage of time, you have many more females offering the Kalgani. I thought that this picture was very, um, you know, uh, it, it's such a unique picture because this devotee has his tongue pierced with the veil, and then you have a typical picture of Palani, where Kalgani originated, and then we have a picture of Lord Muruga. Of course, at Palani, Lord Muruga is referred to as Tandani Dabani. I just wanted you to see the difference in the shape of the stainless steel container. How the 21st century is impacted, impacting on our practices and change is coming uh, about. This, um, I actually wanted you to, to see the lady on the right with her mouth pierced. The carbony bearers express relief and contentment. Note the picture of Lord Anuman in the carbony. The Songu suspended on chains, carried on a pole. This is the frontal view of the carbony bearer. The Pongani Uttaram carbony festival at Great Village. And then the devotees normally, when they've completed their carbony and they come around the temple, they lift their carbonies and they put it up almost to say that I've completed my vow because there are various reasons why devotees undertake to offer the comedy. I just thought I must show you uh, this picture which has an array of songs containing uh, look wow. This is also another comedy bearer who's waiting in the queue. Now I've actually brought this picture to the screen because the ladies play a very important role as well. And they are the karma yogins because the day before the kavadi, the ladies prepare all the vegetables. They come, they cut the vegetables, they prepare it. And of course, um, they have a cook who, prepare, who starts cooking. But at Break Village, they actually have a butter prayer to commence the cooking at 9 o'clock on the eve of the kavadi. At 12 o'clock, they have a midnight prayer to give life to the kavadi. And the cooking actually commences at 9 o'clock the, the night before because they have to cater for so many devotees. The temple chariot is called by the devotees. Now, the reason why I actually showed you this is because poverty also teaches us patience. We're always in the stress-storm world. We want to rush from one point to the other. And here the devotees are, no matter how you want to rush, you have to wait your turn. So this just depicts the ladies waiting. And a very nice aspect of this is, it reminds me of a moving necklace. The devotees just carry on. They begin early in the day and they go till very late at night with the uh, offerings and of uh, uh, their fruits and various other ingredients. You would find that the picture here is different because it reflects an earlier year of, of the temple chariot. And here, of course, is a picture of a lady, lady throwing the sweets and mixed with hulu. Kavadi Atu. And that is Kavadi as uh, um, practiced as, uh, uh, you know, uh, in oral tradition in South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say that the philosophical aspect of comedy is very, very important and um, the, one can see comedy as a healing agent. I'm not going to develop it, I've developed on the topic, but I'm going to end it there. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, Kavani as an expression of contemporary Hindu ritual worship in South Africa has been practiced in unbroken continuity in spite of the dominant influences of Western culture. This ritual forms an integral aspect of popular Hinduism. The growing popularity of the Kavani ritual has to a large extent contributed towards the propagation, perpetuation 
and promotion of culture in South Africa. In spite of the fact that the torchbearers of Hindu culture set foot at a turbulent period in world history, they were firmly entrenched in their beliefs and practices which have endured since then and subsequently shaped Hinduism as practice today. Little did they realize that the oral style tradition handed over from generation to generation would in years to come become the lifeblood for the preservation of their ancient cultural heritage. Furthermore, these humble cultural custodians barely realized that the religious cultural seeds planted by them would in due course germinate into edifices not of human humanity's monumental ego, but to their public spiritedness, which attracts thousands of devotees on the occasion of God. Really, indeed, in the cultural history of Hindus in South Africa, is so much owed to so few. Indeed, they should be honored in the portals of a cultural gal gallery. Truly, they were of trial blazing stuff. A legion of Hindus bear witness and participate in the Kavani ritual. Their immense devotion to the ancestral faith is beyond doubt. Although Kavadi is predominantly a South Indian festival, it is difficult not to notice the plethora of Hindu linguistic groups represented by devotees of all ages, indicative of multiculturalism in South Africa is the fact that we have a growing number of people from other linguistic groups, Hindi speaking, also offering Kavadi. The overall picture of the Pangani Uttaram Kavadi Festival as practiced at Great Village Tangart is that of the Temple Management Committee in 1909 who firmly entrenched its cultural base. These cultural custodians of Great Village left an indelible stamp on the subsequent practice of Kavadi. Kavadi as practice of Great Village today is a product of their effort. The picture of Kavadi presented today bears testimony that Muruga devotees who come to Great Village on their pilgrimage are an active, joyful and richly cultured people who for almost a century have kept the practice alive. Indeed, Kavadi in South Africa is a growing phenomenon here to stay. This ancient ritual has endured since the early years and still continues to provide spiritual sustenance to all Muruga worshippers the world over and will no doubt continue for centuries to come. And we Hails from South Africa, he's a South African citizen. And in most cases, 
these priests are not qualified, but they have a lot of bhakti and devotion. So those are the local priests. You find them ranging from all age groups, and in my personal view, I've conducted research in areas like an area known as Mount Edgecombe. Uh, I find that the older priests are very humble. With the passage of time, I think this is changing. If one looks at the Indian priests, these are priests who hail from Chile, who, who hail from South India, and they are employed at the various temples. Now, normally and usually, they come with their various ways of performing rituals. But what happens is, because of established practices in South Africa, you'd find that the community of the old members would actually direct them and tell them exactly how to perform the ritual in accordance with oral tradition, because they retain that identity by passing it over from generation to generation. So then they are instructed by the committee members of that particular temple to conduct the rituals in that way. But I must admit that they do have their own school of philosophy and one does find that there is erosion taking place at the moment. Looking at it in the context of the Sri Lankan priests, these are the priests who hail from Sri Lanka and uh, they are also employed at temples coming with their school of philosophy. Now one of the areas that I might just develop is that you find that the local practices differ from, or the local priests will differ in these ritualistic practices as compared to uh, the priests from Chennai or the priests from Sri Lanka. Uh, this is something that we are finding a little difficult and I don't know if it's ever going to happen or become a reality but I think what we do hope is that there would be some form of uniformity at some stage. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you for inviting that. Uh, may I have another question? Like uh, you mentioned about the Tamilians that take part in South Africa in the Kabbalah festival. Do any other Indians out of South Africa take part in this festival? Yes, they do. The other Indians in South Africa, we are divided into two major linguistic groups. We have on one end the southern speaking Hindus who are made up of the Tamil and the Telugu speaking Hindus. And we have the northern speaking Hindus who are made up of the Hindi and the Gujarati speaking Hindus. Now, the the Kaudari Kaudar festival is predominantly a Tamil festival, but uh, say, well, it's been, let's say for at least 15 years now, you, we find that lots of other races are coming into the fold of Kaudari and they are offering the Kaudari. And uh, they, if I could say from a linguistic point of view, it would be Hindi speaking. Uh, in terms of that, uh, culture, no, we haven't had black people offering the poverty, but we have had at Great Village black devotees who actually sing the songs and play the song. I've seen it actually and I've interviewed it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for enlightening us. Well, my name is... <laughs> May I ask the question now? Yes, please do. Yeah. Um, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Saraswati Padayachi for the enlightening uh, presentation. I went to South Africa as a representative of Malaysia for the World Parliament of Religions and there I noticed that there are various groups promoting their own uh, philosophies and ideologies and I found it very difficult that in the World Parliament of Religion each one was, some of them were trying to condemn other groups and saying that Shiva is and the Murga, they actually belong to a reptile world. That's what was told to me. So of course I stood up and I said that you shouldn't make such statements in the World Parliament of Religions, which was started by uh, Swami Vivekananda more than 100 years ago. So what are your education um, 
thanks so that the people understand what Lord Murga is. Because I am also a great devotee of Lord Murga and my guru was uh, Tirupurga Kribananda Variyar and I learned a lot of things, Tirupurga and everything from him and I love for tender language as well. But I am thinking what, how can we promote this feeling for Lord Murga and what he really is to the younger generation. So this tradition will continue in the proper way. Thank you very much. Madam, is there a question? What was the question again? I am an educationist. So I would like to know how the devotion about the comedy and things could be explained to the younger generation so that this tradition could be followed in the proper way and not led People will be led astray by different kinds of teachings. That is my question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for the question. Um, it's been a burning issue for me as well, how to provide information and education to the Rubin Bhaktas. It's something that always touched my heart when I started with this topic when I was a second year student at university. One of the major problems we have in South Africa is the fact that most of the Kavani bearers are ignorant of the actual significance of the various aspects of Kavani, whether it be the symbolological significance, the mythological significance, or the philosophical significance. And this is what really urged me to pursue my study and, uh, you know, in the field of Kavani. But to answer your question, I think the only way we can do that is to educate the younger ones. But here I must mention that the biggest problems we have in South Africa is that because of the impact of other cultures, the parents themselves have to be blamed. Because the parents are not making an effort to make these topics be discussed around the table every day so that they invite it into their children. It becomes part of their, their meals to, 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 to discuss these topics because the parents become westernized and this is a problem that we are experiencing. But I think the only way we can do it is by, and that is one of the reasons why I think I have undertaken to uh, um, initiate the formation of the Centre for Skanda Muruga Studies in South Africa, and that is what we do in our students' for. Thank you. Madam, is there a question? Yes.
context of comedy, comedy is specifically related, in my opinion, to Lord Moon. He is the primal deity of comedy. To me, I have, you know, I'll be quite honest to you, I brought those pictures to show to you because I do have something with me, within myself, that doesn't accept it. But it is a very sensitive issue in South Africa because it becomes very difficult to control these devotees on the field. They come and they want to do things the way they want to do it and they continue. So from that point of view, I really feel that education is something that's going to conquer that. And that's my intention. I hope that answers your question. And the last question, Okay. Uh, madam, you mentioned that uh, Many chariots, as many as 45 chariots uh, are being drawn during this uh, festival, Kamari Taking Festival. Now in our country, in Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia, we only have one chariot bearing the, the deity, Murga. So can you please explain this concept and uh, what, uh, what do these chariots signify? To answer your question, it's an established practice in South Africa at all temples, or most of the temples, that they have the theme or the, the actual chariot that contains the Utsava Murti of Murugan, Bali and Devikani. So, some temples don't have chariots, they carry the Utsava Murti on their shoulders. But what has happened in South Africa in the early years the chariot concept was born and devotees on their own began the drawing of chariots. Initially it was just a very simple structure, but with the passage of time it's uh, sort of grown into major dimensions and so much so that I found that there were chariots that were drawn by devotees that were enormously high and had to be transported by trucks from uh, the temple to the top of grounds. If one looks at the concept of chariot within the context of Muruga worship, it should the focus should be on the Muruga chariot. It should not be on the chariot that are drawn by these devotees. But because of the concept of trance and because of the piercing etc, this is where devotees began that form of worship. And because it's become an established practice, there's no way it's going to leave. Because in South Africa, lots of people are governed by the fact if I begin something, I've got to carry it out for my lifetime. If I do a prayer a particular way, I've got to continue it for my lifetime, otherwise it will be in my psyche and, you know, it will not be fulfilled. So I do agree with you in the context of they should be on chariot, but unfortunately, that is not the practice in South Africa. In Malaysia, also there are many chariots. If one attends the Night of the Twenty Caves or the Penang Waterfall, you will see many devotees pulling an assortment of chariots with books to their hands. And I would like to end this by inviting you one day to attend the Night of the Malaysia. Manchester United Party, the Arsenal Party, and the Liverpool Party.